for example, he wants to open his first shop and then grow to like a franchise. Mm -hmm. So how that works? So first, obviously, you need to have a book of business. You need to have enough traffic, enough um, a big enough database to 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 flow, right? Um, you need to have experience. You need to be able to have enough self development to be a leader. Uh, if you don't have those, um, if you don't have those features, I guess, or the characteristics, you need to start working on them, sharpen them, because even if you do open up a shop or a brokerage or whatever, a firm, um, you're not going to be able to retain your employees or retain your team because they're not going to like working with you. They're not going to like the energy and environment is huge when you when you deal with a barbershop. If you can't vibe with your barbers, um, you know, it's going to be bad energy and it's going to fall on the clientele. They're going to feel that and they're going to see that and you're not going to be able to grow a franchise from there. So definitely work on yourself before you do that. Um, after that, I, I think that finding a good location with foot traffic is very important. Um, find the location with an anchor spot. An anchor spot meaning a Publix, a supermarket, or a major shopping center. Oh, that's what they call anchor spot? Yeah, so like an anchor is the, the one that's pretty much bringing everything together and bringing all the foot traffic. For example, um, I don't know if I can mention this, but my cousin opened up a barbershop in Coral Springs, and he opened one up in next to Publix in uh, Coral Springs. And that has been driving so much traffic to his, to his, uh, to his space that he's, he needs more barbers. So, for example, he, has, he probably has a full capacity right now with barbers. But those barbers, especially if you're new, you're getting that foot traffic. People who walk in, there's, still, there's people waiting there, and you're getting that constant, um, that constant flow of cash flow into your into your business and not only that you're getting that cash flow you're getting that maybe repeat business that that's how you build your book of business that repeat business is your business your referrals me and my wife we did a mistake that we we were wasn't pre prepared to mm -hmm. open up our own our first, first business. shop first business we didn't look at none of that mm -hmm. yes it's it was luck right it was god we're successful right now because we strive a lot so, but now I have a different mindset. Mm -hmm. I do everything you just said. Yeah. What are, what are, what about the investor? What they are looking for in a barber? Let's say, giving the same example. What they, what the documents they are looking for? What the uh, proofs they are looking for to invest in a barber? So for, for example. So let me see if I can if I if I got your question right. Um, what is a a leasing company? Let, let's say or a I'm an investor, right? Um, I want to invest in a barber. Oh, you want to invest in a barbershop? In a barbershop. Oh, okay. A barber that wants to open a, a, mm -hmm. a, a barbershop or a barbershop that is, is already going and successful. What mm -hmm. I'm, what, if I'm an investor, what I'm looking for? If I'm an investor, I'm going to put it in my shoes. If I'm an investor, I'm looking for a barbershop that has a following, that has a good book of business, who can show me their P&L statements, that is organized enough to show me their P&L statements. And P&L meaning your profit and loss, you know, what are your expenses compared to what are your profits? Um, you have to learn how to itemize your profits and losses. If you want to be a business owner, you need to know these terms. You know, what are your, what's your profit? What's your losses? You need to be able to know uh, what's your retention rate? You know, exactly uh, how many clients are you keeping? How many clients are dropping off? You know, and you have to know why they're dropping off. What's your marketing like? Are you marketing yourself? Uh, and then after that, it's basically location. Is the location going to be able to uh, amplify the business um, or, or is the location how much is the location compared to how much the business can make what's my profit going to be like uh, what's my return on investment is it even going to be worth it to invest in you or the business if my expenses are going to be too close or too high uh, too close to the profit like my margins need to be there I have two observations about what you said one was is your cousin right that opened a mm -hmm. shop okay uh, I've seen some uh plazas where they have two barber shops mm -hmm. and i think that's the mistake of the first one that rented that made the lease agreement where they didn't put the clause where you couldn't have another barber shop in the same plaza because this is not good luckily at the time we did or signing we had uh, an attorney like reviewing the whole lease mm -hmm. and he instructed us in that like mm -hmm. you have to have this clause otherwise you can have two three barber shops here competing in the same plaza that's not good for you and i've seen plazas where they have two three business in the same industry which is not good so it's something we should really be careful when Absolutely. we're signing the lease yeah 
And the second thing you said that I can um, relate in the barber world is you said you decided to change instead of selling homes around the 300 thousands and make a lot of effort, more effort to make 1 million or whatever was your goal, you decided, okay, so I will invest in homes that are worth more. So I make less transactions and will be able to reach my goal. Barbers can do the same depending on how much they charge uh, per service, right? Per haircut or mm -hmm. beard or whatever services they are offering. But one thing that I think is really important, before you did that, you had some years of experience first. Mm -hmm. So if a barber is starting, they can just start charging $100 a haircut. There is no mm -hmm. sense on that. They have a, a path they should go, gain experience, master their craft, know what they're doing, mm -hmm. market themselves, and then they can do the same instead of serving 20 clients a day at $20 to make 200 Mm -hmm. They can charge $50 and serve four clients a day. But yeah, there yeah. is a path, right? Until you got there. You just don't jump and now I'm going to sell million dollar houses. Absolutely. And it's like my barber, my cousin, right? Uh, Marvin. He He's the only barber that I trust. And it's very... Let, let me, quick question. Marvin is not the one that say barbers. He's not the one, right? No, he's Marvin. very, he's low key. Oh, yeah. he's low key. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's, he's the only barber that I go to. And when he's booked out, I get so frustrated because it's your haircut is your image most of the time. And um, I just don't trust anyone else with my hair. If I do go to someone else, they're going to just tape me up. They're going to they're gonna shape me up, and that's all I, I'm going to let them do. I'm not going to let them use scissors on my head because he knows what I want. You know, when you when you deal with that barber and he, he tailors his – his style to you and you tailor your style to him and you sit on that chair and he doesn't even ask you like what do you want today he's like he already knows unless you mention something um, and that's the beautiful thing about building that trust and that that clientele because once you have a client it's mostly for life unless they move somewhere else or whatever and that fear that client has if they're moving is like damn what am i going to do with my new barber like you know that that goes to people's mind like now that you need a haircut I was going to my to my guy. Now I have to look for a new barber, and it's it's so scary. And that goes with anything in business. Um, when you build that trust and brand recognition, and the quality of work is consistent, nobody would go anywhere else. And I think people would pay uh, the extra money to for that. And that comes with experience. Um, originally, when I first started getting haircuts, it was sixteen dollars, right? Sixteen dollars. I was going to this old Puerto Rican guy. Uh, my father was getting his haircut by him. And it kept going up from there, 16 to 18 to 20 to 25. And I was like 35. And I'm like, I'll pay, you know, I'll still pay because I know that when I walk out of that place, I'm going to have the haircut that I want and I'm going to feel good. Um, and that's what I'm paying for, feeling good. <laughs>